Hello, and thank you for joining us to discuss Thinking Big, Innovative Opportunities for Rural Libraries. We are a group of library managers from rural areas performing research on what big ideas are happening in the li larger library world and how they can be adapted to suit our small town contexts. Rural areas can be perceived as having more traditional and static libraries, but we are drivers of change and we aim to bring all the newest and biggest ideas in library scholarship to enliven our communities. As Nicholson states, innovation is necessary to reimagine libraries' relationships with communities and achieve library goals of being a valued and integral part of users' daily lives. We have dedicated our time as a professional working group to look at what these big ideas are and how they can be scaled to fit our home libraries so we can bring equitable and exciting services to our communities and so we can share our ideas and advocate for better library services overall. We focused on the topics of using technology to bridge the digital divide, developing youth services that dissolve socioeconomic barriers, bringing the library to our patrons through access and outreach, and on capitalizing on the shared goal of businesses and libraries to build better communities. When asked why they don't utilize the library, 30.3% of rural respondents stated that they had no need. 18.7% of these same respondents stated that the hours were inconvenient, and 14.3% stated that the library is too far away. Technology could hold the answers to these problems. Libraries in larger cities have alleviated some of the, those concerns through the implementation of technology programs and resources, and some of these same programs can be applied to smaller libraries. These new technological trends from larger libraries can be used to improve the library experience in smaller communities. For instance, programs such as self-service libraries, digital book lending, makerspaces, or even just computer access can be adopted by smaller libraries and modeled after the offerings at the larger libraries. Access to training in the use of these technologies may also serve to increase the rural libraries relevancy to rural communities. The internet has been compared to such milestones as the invention of the steam engine and electricity. Some herald its creation as it, the third industrial revolution in terms of the change that it can bring and has brought. Some libraries, however, like the library pictured here from Defuniac Springs, Florida, still do not even provide access to computers or the internet to the patrons of the library. With the cost of a decent computer system at an all-time low, shouldn't even the most rural library have access to one? Why is there such a vast difference between the levels of access to, te to technology between smaller and larger libraries? The answer is what is known as the digital divide. The digital divide is the imbalance in access to digital information and services between the rich and the poor, or the urban and the rural. 47.7% of rural respondents replied to a survey saying that they would like to see digital content and materials provided by their local library, yet the library does not currently offer access to these services. 39.1% of respondents replied that they would like to see trainings in such in such technologies offered by their library, and yet none are provided. Adding internet-enabled computers to rural libraries could be the first step in starting to shrink the digital divide. Let's refer back to a statistic from earlier. When asked why they don't utilize the library, 18.7% of respondents stated that the hours are inconvenient. How can technological innovation from a big city help solve this? Self-service kiosks are options that are appearing at larger libraries. These self-service options can increase the hours of operation of small libraries by allowing patrons to check out and return books for themselves. With this kiosk, the need to have a librarian present at the library the entire time that the library is open is eliminated. This allows the library to stay open longer and patrons to visit at times that are more convenient for them. Makerspaces are another growing trend being offered in larger libraries. 
These spaces have computer-aided design programs and 3D printers to allow patrons the ability to design and create small craft projects. 3D printers are getting cheaper to purchase and maintain every day, and they don't take up a large amount of space. This small investment could draw in patrons who want to try their hand at creating small projects, yet don't have the budget to buy one themselves. It also allows the community to mix technology and art together, enriching te technological literacy and artistic expression at the same time. With the help of several grants, the Brooklyn Public Library built a new curriculum to teach early childhood caregivers how to build communicative and literacy skills through talking and play. They revolutionized their traditional programs such as story times by hosting free play periods before the program, focusing the program itself on finger plays and interaction, and following the session with play stations full of different activities. Librarians model how to play and talk to young children while educating on how early childhood play is, quote, linked to brain development, language acquisition, the development of socioeconomic skills, and self-regulation, end quote. BPL also hosts play events where children can explore various new experiences and parents can see the progression of play. Play between infants and toddlers looks different but it's important to understand how play during these crucial, crucial stages is about interpreting new stimuli and social interaction. Researchers note that children in high-income homes hear 33 million words by age three, but lower-income children only heard 10 million. This disparity can mount up to massive language disadvantages before they even start preschool, but the library can help bridge this gap. New research is suggesting that parent-child playtime might be even more beneficial for children, especially for those in lower socioeconomic groups, than the number of words they hear. Unstructured play may also be more important for children with disabilities. Free play is being replaced due to parenting trends towards structured extracurricular activities, educational trends, and legislation that replace recess with structured activities, neighborhood safety concerns that prevent group play, social exclusion, and poverty that restricts access to toys and games. A toy library starts conversations about play, creates a place where children can play together, and levels the playing field by making toys available to all children so their play can keep pace with their changing interests and abilities. Equitable access to play may be as important for literacy development as equitable access to books. These are some examples of the toys libraries are circulating. Toys should support three main types of play, object or exploratory play, pretend imaginative or dramatic play, and social, physical, or investigative play. Parent-child engagement and unstructured free play opportunities are always the goal. Science, technology, engineering, art, and math, referred to by the acronym STEAM, are gaining major traction with large libraries to encourage creative play and prepare children for the changing future of work. Chicago Public Library has an enormous multipurpose maker lab. Vancouver Public Library lends instruments. Toronto Public Library has 3D printers and loans custom programming boards called Arduino, and Fraser Valley Regional Library circulates telescopes and programmable robots called Sphero. Little larger libraries have laser cutters, audio labs, and other expensive and space-consuming equipment. Tools like Makey Makey, Squishy Circuits, Cubelets, and Raspberry Pi are reasonably priced options we can keep in library to get kids creating and programming. Ames Public Library and Iowa State University partnered to create take-home STEAM kits that include a fiction book focused on a theme, an activity to discover STEAM principles through play, and a non-fiction book to reflect on the experience. The Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh developed an innovative programming strategy where librarians can borrow kits that include a picture book biography and a related STEAM activity using only readily available materials. With some time, low-cost toys, an expansion of the picture book collection, and a petty cash budget, we can benefit from the development these libraries have done and provide the same quality programming without the high cost. Suggestions for implementation include professional upgrading education for library staff, play-based curriculums that echo Brooklyn Public Libraries, raw materials like household items and recycling for making toys and programs, a circulating toy library, a Lego wall installment to promote an atmosphere of play and ongoing STEAM learning, in library STEAM toys, an expanded picture book biography collection, STEAM program kits, and a strong marketing strategy to promote your changes. 
public libraries have been reaching out to their communities in many ways for years. There are great opportunities that rural libraries can create based on larger libraries' ideas and trends. According to Yarrow and McAllister, alternative services are a core part of the overall service delivery model at many public libraries in North America. Some of the big ideas for providing access and outreach discovered were pop-up libraries, mobile book carts, book vending machines, technology mobiles, mobile makerspaces, and even books on bikes. These are all great ways of bringing the library to the community. When reviewing the ways larger libraries bring resources to their public spaces, there are many things to consider before implementing any in your rural community. You need to determine what part of the community you are aiming to reach. Are they busy during library hours? Are they able to physically get to the branch? These decisions tie in with your goal. Are you looking to gain new members or create a library setting at a particular location? Once you've defined the community need, you have to ensure you have capacity to provide these resources. Yarrow and McAllister point out that most alternative services are managed by a central department of the library, or as Nicholson points out, by a community librarian whose focus is on the community and relationships that can be built externally. If your library does not have the capacity for these types of departments or hires, you will need to analyze where your existing staff and departments have room to take on access and outreach. Finally, the available budget will determine which access and outreach option is your best to implement. Based on the current access and outreach trends, it was determined that for rural communities, pop-up libraries were the best to implement as they are cost-effective and fairly easy to ensure a quick turnaround from idea to fruition. Pop-up libraries can serve in two ways. One, to promote the library's offerings and encourage new membership and two, provide access to programming and the collection to parts of the community that have difficulty getting to the branch. It is certainly possible that pop-up library services can achieve both purposes at the same time. Benefits of pop-up library locations and services include increased membership and collection use, community awareness of library services, and the creation of external partnerships. With so many benefits, it can be hard to figure out where to start. As Davis and all state, pop-up libraries are temporary in nature, but can be so successful that they become permanent. Therefore, the best way to implement is to pick a few options and ideas and see what happens. For promotion, think of creating a presence by having a booth at craft shows, heavy foot traffic locations, town halls, and school information nights. When looking to improve community access, Think of ways to create repeat hours and designated space at local parks, daycares, resource centers, and long-term care facilities. Look for partnerships that you can build further. As per Nicholson, your aim should be to reach underserved parts of the community and take advantage of external opportunities to promote library services. Based on the location and community served, you lastly need to decide which parts of the collection and services to bring with you. Also, are there any initiatives you want to implement, such as reserves and returns? You will also want to consider if there is value in incorporating your digital collection. Pop-up libraries are cost-effective and relatively easy to implement. The goal is to reach out to the community and build relationships to further promote and increase demand for library resources. What better way to start alternative services than by a story time in the park with parents and caregivers, or a chance to browse a portion of the library after a hockey practice or community meeting. Hi, I'm Jill Cartesian and I'm going to be presenting on economic development ideas for rural libraries. Rural municipalities face unique challenges such as economic hardship due to a decline in resource or manufacturing industries, an aging population, and a lack of adequate funding. But where there are challenges, there are also opportunities. For rural municipalities, developing a vibrant and sustainable local economy is vital in retaining and attracting businesses, health and education professionals, and in residents, particularly youth, immigrants, and Indigenous peoples. Public libraries have been identified in research literature as anchor institutions within a community. 
Anchor institutions are defined as organizations rooted in their local communities by mission, invested capital, and are relationships to customers, employees, vendors, and clientele. Community engagement helps to solidify a library's position as an anchor institution. Librarians and library staff foster trust, build relationships, and quickly respond to the evolving needs of their community. Library staff support economic development by doing outreach. As Courtney presented, the first step to engaging is reaching out, outside of your comfort zone. Reaching out is your golden moment to build strong and lasting relationships. Start by identifying business organizations such as Chambers of Commerce and the Economic Development Division of your local municipality. Find out about business networking groups such as Women in Business or a Downtown Business Revitalization Group and attend their meetings. You can also meet influential leaders in your community by joining civic and charitable groups such as Rotary or Kiwanis. Library staff learn. To effectively engage with the business community, it helps to speak their language. Research by Hanks found that rural librarians often lacked business knowledge, and so his recommendation is grow your knowledge in this area. Review your library collection to get a solid understanding of the business resources you have available and how you can support business research and industry intelligence. As Brandon presented earlier, technology and computers are a game changer in connecting the library resources with members, especially those beyond the municipality. Google and the American Libraries Association recently expanded their partnership to include the Grow with Google program. This is a collection of free resources and tools to help start and grow a business or enhance career skills. These can be linked to your library website at, website at no cost. The focus here is on connection development, linking resources with users. You've been reaching out, you've been learning, you've been connecting. Here are some ideas to get you started, but do visit the websites of Urban Public Libraries for further inspiration. For businesses, invite business leaders to volunteer in a pitch and plan where professionals can review and provide feedback on business plans or budgets. Open your library to host a speaker series or st on starting an online business or exploring export opportunities. Use technologies such as Facebook Live to stream these events. Economic gardening is a concept that has taken off in the U.S. It's about economic development that helps local businesses grow rather than focusing on luring in large companies. Libraries can provide training to business owners and staff on how to use the library resources to search for patents and industry and competitor intelligence. Grow your career. Employers require a workforce with 21st century technology skills. Some ideas include career coaches who can provide interactive sessions on developing your online brand with LinkedIn, Twitter, and blogs. Or set up a resume review service where participants can submit their resume and receive feedback from career coaches. Provide in-house training and online learning courses on how to use productivity tools that like word processing, spreadsheets and slide decks, as well as basic computer training. Entrepreneurs uh, have great ideas that need space to grow. Observe how your library space is currently used. Change it or modify it to support and attract business activities and host events. Think way outside the box, like maybe making a library space available after hours. Maker spaces are not just for kids. Include materials that can be used to create and trial product ideas. Host a Dragon's Den night where entrepreneurs can meet and share their ideas with local business leaders. And challenge your library staff to think like an entrepreneur. Many urban libraries, such as the Calgary Public Library, have a fee-based business research service. It's a low-cost way to generate additional revenue and promote the library. Maybe host a human library where entrepreneurs and business leaders can be checked out to borrowers who can ask questions one-on-one. -on -one. And definitely keep the momentum going by developing an in-talk, a short inspirational speaker series that you can host live and stream through Facebook Live. The next steps are ready, set, go. Your library is a rich resource of tools, technology, space, and of course people. Discovering ways to connect the various programs in your library can lead to even greater learning opportunities. 
It's like pairing youth in a ready-to-code program with a business that has a technical need, or inviting members attending a social media program to put their skills into action by becoming the library's Twitter and Instagram ambassadors. We hope you enjoyed our presentation as much as we enjoyed sharing it with you. In the slightly provocative words of David Lankus, bad libraries build collections, good libraries build services, and great libraries build communities. So build a great library with these big ideas. Your community needs you. Thank you.